The best way to listen to the best of the week is on the relevant radio app, free and always free. Download and share the number one free Catholic app today in the App Store. Uh, this morning, our Glenn Leverance has a special guest to talk about the promise of hope in every season. Glenn? Yeah, we do need to talk about hope, definitely. A lot of scary things on the horizon here, whether it be those spooky little kids coming to the door, whether it be running out of candy, that's kind of scary too, whether it be the election next week or just things getting darker. We uh, turn the clocks back. So in the northern uh, part of the country, it gets dark pretty early uh, starting next weekend already. And that can lead to kind of feeling down about some things perhaps as well. But there is hope, of course, in our Lord for every season here to talk about hope from joy in all seasons. Singer and speaker, retreat leader, and a longtime radio guest, Jenny Thing joins us this morning. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Glenn. Hey, great to have you along. Your joyful voice will help us out uh, in this time of year with so many things going on that possibly can get us down a little bit. But what are some of the things we can do to, to guard our hope this time of year? Well, first thing, I just want to encourage everybody that's listening right now that no matter what season we are in, election season, fall, even, you know, if we're looking at Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, if we're taking those literal holidays that um, everybody knows about and some of them celebrate, um, God is still king no matter what. He never leaves his throne. And that is something that gives me hope, especially when we're talking about these changes because he's still on the throne, nothing that we see with our human eyes actually should change our focus. Our focus should be on the fact that God is faithful and he loves us. He loves us. He says in his word, he has no favorites. So that means that no matter what season you're in, whether it is in Arizona where you're dealing with the different kind of weather, it's not necessarily fall like what we have here in Minnesota. I lived in Arizona, but it's a beautiful season, even in those podiums and pitfalls that we find out with weather. And with life. So in every life, I just want to go into this a little bit. In every life, we have seasons. We have seasons of winter. Um, Winter is kind of that dormant season. Sometimes it's cold and dormant. Sometimes it is just dry and dormant. Um, But it's that dormant season where maybe it seems like something is no longer. But we have also then the spring season that comes with that, that, that follows suit oftentimes. And that time is that time of new life where you can see that new growth. Or even in the word, it says, do you not see I'm doing a new thing? And I think that that is such a beautiful hope that we can have knowing that there's dormancy, right? Especially as Minnesotans, we're, we're looking at the dormancy that's coming and it can really, like you say, bring us down at times, but there is a spring that will come and it will look different every, in every life. So it will look different in every season of life. But that spring does come where God is continuing to to do new things in us if we allow him to. We also have the summer. And the summertime, you know, for Minnesotans, summertime is often the, the opportunity to go out and do the projects or go on vacation, to go camping, to go out to the lake, you know, all those things. Talking as, as a, a Minnesota lifer for the most part here, beautiful season to have. But it's also a time where God says, hey, rest in me. Take that time of rest. Because there's nothing that you need to, ha- you have to do right at this moment. Just rest in me. Just enjoy this time. And then you've got the harvest of the fall. And that's when we start, you know, plowing the fields with the Lord and we say, okay, we're planting these seeds. Sometimes that's where we get to see those seeds come up when we see the work that God has had us do and we see it come up into life. Now that's, you can add that to any person's life that we have seasons of dormancy, of new life, of rest, and also of harvest. And sometimes we have multiple seasons going at the same time. Life is complex, but rest assured that no matter where you are in life, if you are focusing on the Lord, you can trust that He is going to use every season. In fact, it says in Second Corinthians four sixteen through eighteen, it says therefore we do not lose heart, because you know when we're in those seasons, obviously it wears on us, doesn't it? Um, we don't lose heart, though so outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not what is on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And the reason I say that, this is one of my favorite verses, because that word temporary in Greek means seasons. So since we're looking at this as the season part, we have the hope that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us our eternal glory that far outweighs all the problems that we have, no matter what season that we're in. 
And when we fix our eyes on not what is seen and not just on the season that we're in and pixelate every little thing, but look at the bigger picture and look at the Father who is loving you through every season. It is absolutely amazing. And that fuels that thread of hope through every aspect of our lives. No matter where you're at, you are not alone. And no matter what you're going through, God is with you and encouraging you to keep your eyes on him because he is eternal. The season will change, but he is eternal. And it says in his word, he will never change. And that means that all the grace he promises, all the love he showers on us, that he just lavishes on us in every season, we can receive. And that is the fuel of our joy. Having that hope, even in this uh, season as we get toward fall here, but maybe it is a time of of great harvest for us in our lives. And one of the things that's hard for modern people, right, is we're further removed from an agricultural society. We don't have that patience to plant the seeds and wait and water them and just wait some more to see what might happen. Uh, Of course, all of our modern communications invites us to get what we want now. And so we tend to be motivated by emotion and just what we can see as opposed to being motivated by that sure knowledge of the love of Christ and then waiting for that season of harvest. Is is it important to kind of know what we're up against in that battle in terms of we're going to be pulled and tugged at to, to live on emotion these days? Oh, absolutely. And you know, the thing is, is that no matter how much, if we look at the, the literal seasons of our wherever we live, no matter how much we would wish to get past a season, we cannot change the season on our own, correct? We can't just say, okay, you know, fall's coming up. It looks like it's going to get cold and just jump right into winter. I want to skip all that. We, we can't do it. We do have to have the patience. And that's where that trust in the Father, knowing that the Lord is with us, it helps fuel the fact that we can look back at our lives and all the other seasons and where we did have those opportunities to plant seeds that he has watered, that he has shown his light on, and we can see how he has worked in that. And again, that fuels the hope and gives us the strength to take that next step because it can be daunting. It can be daunting when we're entering in an early time of of darkness. You know, we have daylight savings time ending and all those things are like, oh man, it's going to, we're going to lose an hour. We're going to gain an hour, depending on what type of the season, what time of the season it is. But in reality, it's not about our loss and our gain. It's about what we do in that time. And so when I focus on the Lord and say, okay, God, I see this coming towards me or I'm going towards it. And I pray that you would help me to understand how you want me to process this, how I can get through this. Help me to bring people alongside of me that will encourage me and pray for me as I'm walking through this. Help me to be able to to vocalize that. And in that season and that I'm in, help me to keep my eyes open to how you want me to encourage somebody in their season. Yeah, looking to encourage others and not just wallow in our own, oh, I hate it's dark. Well, yeah, you're coming up on holidays. Maybe you can help someone else who uh, might need a little help this time of year. And uh, if we look outside of ourselves, that can be a great source of not only not worrying about ourselves as much, but uh, we, we find hope and joy in helping others. We do. And, you know, the, the great thing is that when you share joy, it's amazing what you receive back. Now, you can't share joy and expect it to be, you know, given in, in measure by other people. But when you share that joy, it just multiplies the joy inside of you because that joy is the hope of the Father. When he brings those opportunities to you, you can say, wow, this is amazing. I didn't know I could do this. I thought that I was going to be stuck over in this season over here, but now here I find myself seeing that new life, whether it's another person that's been struggling, that you get to have that relationship and that encouragement, you see how God's working in that, or whether it's that time to just rest in the joy that He's given you and say, okay, God, I'm, I'm just fueling up for what's coming next. Either way, He is a faithful God to give you exactly what you need when you need it. And in fact, in Hebrews 13.5, it says, never will I leave you nor will I forsake you. He never says, I will forsake you when it is too cold out or when it's too dark. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't have that on there. It's an absolute never, 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 never. And I think that when we're focusing on those temporary things, on those seasons, we forget about the promises that he gives us that never have an expiration date. Mm. Jenny, as humans, we seem to be made to remember as a way to help us power through things in the present and the toward the future as well. Even the ancient Israelites and this whole Passover thing, right? They're they're taught to remember 
how God helped them through that wilderness. And sometimes we need to, to pause and remember how God has helped us. Go, Oh, yeah, he got me through, well, everything in life up to this day. I, I guess I can probably trust in him for tomorrow, too. Yes, you can. And, you know, I encourage that very much um, to have a journal or even just if you can't journal. A lot of people are, are um, a little bit hesitant to journal, to write their thoughts down. Journaling is different than a, a diary. A diary, you just kind of barf everything out on paper and, you know, don't ever go back to it to see what God has done. A diary is kind of something that you hide and put away. A journal is something that you want to keep out. That if somebody was to open it, they would see your thought process and and your struggles that God has met you in. So when you're journaling those thoughts, you're giving God the praise for what he's done. Or oftentimes I say, you know, start a prayer journal. If you've got something that you're praying about, have a, a section of your journal that's just for prayers and then write in a different color the answers to those prayers or the encouragement you've received so that you can remember that not only did you give this to the Lord, bring it to the foot of the cross and say, God, I need help. I can't do this, but I know you're my help. And then go back and, and show what God has done. Or if you can't do journaling, if you can't, if you feel like that's just not me, I am not a writer, I encourage people just to take a post-it note and write down something that you're thankful for for that day, because there's always something to be thankful for. When you do that, you then put those, fold it up, put it in a jar, and then someday when you're having a bad day, you pull that back out and you read it and you say, wow, God, thank you for doing that. I know you're going to work in what you have in front of me right now. Mm. Great ideas. Great ideas. Get some of those post-it notes to get started, too. Hey, Jenny, thing, thank you so much. Inviting folks to check out joyinallseasons.com, the website, if you're looking for someone to uh, maybe lead your retreat, uh, speak to your group, or even sing for your group as well. Some great things happen when you bring Jenny Thing to the party there. Thank you so much, Jenny. This entire episode of Morning Air is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today, and thanks for listening.